Hi everyone, Peter Zellums and welcome to another Greeny Flix Adventure 8 video. Today we're talking lenses, specifically the 50mm lens, well 50mm focal length and also 70mm focal length in 35mm format. What sort of options there are to actually get that focal length and what sort of quality could you expect from those lenses if you decide to use them for your photography. So we're looking at the 70 and 50s. In this range of lenses, so I've got Nikon and I've got Leica. In 70, I've got the 70 to 200, the 24 to 70, these are F-mount lenses from Nikon, um, a 28 to 300, very versatile lens in the Nikon range, and the 24 to 70, this is a new Z-mount for Nikon, which fits the Nikon Z6. And to use the F-mounts, you have to use an FTZ adapter. For reference, um, I'll be using the Leica 24 megapixel camera, so it's the M240P with a 50mm prime lens as my reference as well. This is one of the best Leica lenses that you can get with regards to detail and contrast and therefore that's a good reference point by which to judge the different lenses as well. So in the 50, I'll be able to do 50 in the Z. 50 in the 24 to 300, 50 in the 24 to 70, and then in the 70 range, these three lenses I'll be able to compare with regards to the detail. I'll be using this chart behind me to actually take the photographs, and then in Lightroom we'll be able to review in greater detail. This all fits into uh, some ideas that sort of came to mind. As always, with my best ideas, I can put them on the back of an envelope or a coaster. And I wanted to sort of put some perspective behind my photography in these videos that I do on my YouTube videos. My thinking was, how do I sort of put all this together as far as photography is concerned? I put, put it down to sort of four things with regards to photography. There's the creativity side, the idea. How does the idea come about? What is the idea? Then it's the tools that you have access to, to actually put those ideas into action. The action is the process that you have to follow to use those tools. And then it's the results that matter and whether those results actually reflect uh, your idea and is part of the presentation, who sees it. There is a, a process of, well, are you happy with that? And then what did you learn through that entire, going through all those four steps? And that's a review process, which takes you back to the new idea again. And then you go through the whole process again. So today it's gonna to be around the tools and which is understanding again your tools so that if you know more about what to expect out of the different tools that you have then you know how to use those tools into the next stage which is the process taking the photograph and moving on it's not a case of which is the best lens it's really a case of understanding your lenses so when you go into the next stage of process and taking the shot you know what you're working with frequency of use funny it's proportional to the size the smartphone i use most often because it's always convenient uh, the Leica I use the next most often because it's the smallest and most compact and therefore I can just put it in a small bag and, and it always travels with me. The Nikon Z6 is the one I use for my studio photography and videos. I'm just using a GoPro in this case here. Uh, so that gets used quite a bit. And then this one gets used the next most because when I do my adventure travel, four-wheel drive around Australia, which isn't happening right now, um, or my motorcycle trips around the world. I end up taking the actual an older Nikon uh, D500. It's a crop sensor with this lens as my main camera, plus a whole bunch of action cameras, because it's light and most convenient. So how does the quality stack up against these other two, which get used less frequently? This one gets used hardly at all. Which then prompts the question, do you keep it or do you try and do some photography where do you actually use this more often? The latter will be true for me. I'll be hanging on to it and be using more and more in the future when I do more and more landscapes with this. Okay, let's get on with the test. Here's our reference photograph with the Leica M240P, 24 megapixel and the Summerlux 1.4 lens, 50 millimeter, but at f4. So if we go in at 100%, this is our reference. So that's the center. If we move towards the edges here, this is what 
the edges look like so all in all the, the photo looks pretty good I know it's a good lens and therefore there's very little uh, vignetting it's uh, pretty much the same all over the image so that's uh, so far so good so that's our reference photograph okay now we've got the Leica Sumalux 50mm 1.4 on the left and then on the right we've actually got the Nikon 28 to 300 f-mount lens let's have a closer look at the two so this is at 100% can you see any difference not a great deal maybe the Leica looks on the left here looks a bit sharper if we go towards the corners here let's see what we start to see and you do see that the Nikon starts to get darker towards the corners if we look at the detail here the Leica very corner here is quite detailed and the uh, Nikon 28 to 300 you start to lose the detail here which you're expecting Nikon when it's at f the 28 to 300 when you take it down to 50 millimeters it actually goes to f 4.5 so its range is 3.5 to 5.6 it goes to 4.5 so in this photograph I had to actually lower the shutter speed to one hundredth of a second on the like it's 125 at f4 no surprises there but at least it gives me a feel for well how much detail do i start to lose in the corners at 50 millimeters the center it's looking pretty good but if we went to 200 percent what do we notice okay so the leica on the left and the nickel on the right and yes you could see that the leica has got more details even in the center at f four and the Nikon is at f4.5 okay so the Leica is on the left and now on the right we've got the 24 to 70 f2.8 Nikon f mount lens okay let's zoom in let's go straight to 200 do we see much difference between the two lenses maybe a little bit more detail in the Leica we'll go to the top and see what we notice printing Again, maybe a little bit more detail on the Leica if you look at color scales here and then color scales here on the Nikon. Looks like there is more detail on the Leica. If we go to the corners, what do we notice? There's less vignetting on the Nikon 24 to 70 compared to the 28 to 300. As far as detail is concerned, the detail looks better than the previous Nikon compared to the Leica, but uh, it's pretty close to it. Not quite as much detail as the Leica. Okay, we've got uh, Leica on the left and on the right now we've got the Nikkor uh, Z mount lens, the 24 to 70 f4s, both at f4. So first glance, uh, they look good. Let's go to 200% and have a closer look. I reckon they're pretty much on par, both the Leica and the Nikkor Z mount, 24 to 70 is looking pretty close to each other. We'll go to the top and have a look at the, the writing, the printing. Can you see much difference? It's very hard to tell. Maybe the Leica still gets it slightly. I'll look at the printing here again. Read color slide on the here on the left. And then color slide here on the right. Does Leica get it? Maybe just a little bit. Leica seems to be more consistent. There's a bit of drop off here. What happens uh, with the clarity, the detail? I think the Leica gets a little bit, a little bit of a drop off here with the Z. Well, not quite like the Leica there for, but again, the Leica is a prime lens. Remember, we stopped the Leica down from 1.4 to 4, whereas the Z is wide open at f4. So wide open at f4, I think it's producing an outstanding result. Let's have a look at the Nikon lens, Z mount versus the F mount as a comparison at F4. Okay, now we've got the Z mount lens, 24 to 70 on the left, and on the right we've got the 28 to 300 F mount lens. So let's go 200 and see what we notice. Straight away we notice that the Z lens, 24 to 70, has more detail than the 28 to 300 at 15 millimeter in the center. We go to the top then we can see what the difference is you can clearly see the difference between the z mount and the f mount 28 to 300 on the right here we go to the corners z is on the left 28 to 300 is on the right and you see that you don't have as much detail on the 28 to 300 
compared to Z at f4. 28 to 300 is at its maximum openness at 4.5 as far as the aperture is concerned at 50 millimeter. So clearly the Z has more detail right across the spectrum from the center to the sides. Okay, let's have a look with Z compared to the F mount 20, F mount um, 24 to 70. Zooming in, the 24 to 70 F mount is looking pretty close to the Z mount, but I think the Z mount still gets it slightly. If we have a look at the printing here, they are also pretty close. Uh, the Z mount, I think, again, if you look at this small printing here on the left, color scales and then color scales on the right. I think the Z mount again wins. If we go to the edges, top right hand corner, top right hand corner quite, quite close to each other. Um, there's less vignetting on the 24 to 70 F mount because it stopped down to F4 because wide open it was F2.8 and so it stopped down to F4 which then evens out the exposure towards corners I think. Whereas the Z mount is uh, showing some vignetting on the left. So what happens when we stop all those 50 millimeter lenses down to f8? Let's have a quick look. So we have our reference lens again. So I've got Leica on the left here and the Z mount 24 to 70 on the right. So have a look at uh, the center. They're uh, looking pretty close. We look at the top, also looking very close to each other. Hard to tell apart, can't really tell them apart. We go to the top right hand corner at, at f8. Uh, also looking very similar. I think maybe a little, yeah. Yeah, very similar, hard to tell them apart. As far as the details concerned, top right hand corner, top right hand corner, I can't really tell them apart. They're so close to each other. Right hand side, printing, much the same. At F8, uh, printing down the bottom here. When we see any difference, it's hard to say. Hard to say, and does anyone guess whether the like is a little bit better or not? But it's pretty so close, you would never notice in a real situation. Okay, this time we've got the Leica on the left here and we've got the 28 to 300 on the right at 50 millimeters, both at F8. Let's see how the Nikon lens stacks up at F8. Does the sharpness increase? Okay, at F8, yes, uh, you can still see that the Leica is more detail in the center than the Nikon. Up the top there, you can still see the difference. Go to the right hand corner here. Uh, yes, you can still see the difference, much sharper with the Leica compared to the Nikon. And in the middle, yes, a little, yes, the same. And down the bottom, also the same. Okay, so no surprises there. The Leica still is, has more detail than a stock down 28-300 Nikon F mount lens. Let's have a look at the other F mount lenses and see how they stack up. The lens on the left here, Leica lens on the left here, and we've got the 2470 F mount Nikon lens on the right. Okay, zooming in at 200%, and uh, the centers are looking pretty close to each other. Maybe my exposure is a bit, a bit brighter on the Leica compared to the Nikon, but I think otherwise they are pretty much identical. As far as details concerned, up the top here, what do we see? Okay, so looking at color scales on the left, oops, color scales, okay. Uh, Leica on the left here at the top, and then the Nikon at the right here on the top. Yeah, the Leica still gets it a bit, I think, compared to the Nikon. Looking at the right-hand corners, yes, you can see that the Leica is more detailed than the Nikon 24 to 70. Okay, so no surprises there at this stage. And also the Leica on the left here is more detail on the left compared to the Nikon 24 to 70 with it stopped down to f8. I think the conclusion of these, the 50 millimeter focal length across all those lenses, Leica being the prime lens has greatest detail. The next best lens would have to be the Z mount lens, the 24 to 70 f4, followed by the f mount 24 to 70 f2.8 nickel lens, and then 28 to 300 f mount lens. But at least, I mean, there's no surprises there. That's what I was expecting. Let's see how the 28300 compares to other F mount lens. All right, so we've got the 28300 on the left, 24 to 70 F mount on the right. Okay, zooming in. So in the center, they're probably quite similar. At the top, at F8, both are actually quite similar. We go to the right here, top right hand corner. 
we notice that the 24 to 70 is sharper in the corner than the 28 to 300, but there's not that much difference. 2470 is better than the 28 300, but pretty close. If we look at the right hand side here in the middle, it's hard to tell them apart really that much. Down the bottom, the 24 to 70 is better bottom right hand corner than the 28 300. The 24 to 70, I would say, is a little bit sharper in the center, but they're very close. And this is at 200%. Okay, let's have a look at uh, these lenses at 70 millimeters. So obviously I don't have the Leica uh, as my reference lens anymore. I'm going to be using the Z mount lens, the 24 to 70 at 70. We're going to use 5.6 as the reference f-stop. So we've got okay, the Z mount on the left and then on the right we've got the first lens is a 28 to 300 f 3.5 to 5.6 at 5.6 both at 70 millimeters. Let's have a look in greater detail. And we can see that the Z mount lens, I think has greater detail than 28, 300, which is consistent to at the 50 millimeter focal length as well. So I guess no real surprises there. You can see it's actually quite clear here that the Z mount lens is quite a bit more detailed than the F mount lens. And as we'd probably expect that to be true also to the corners here which is pretty clear that that's the case when you look at the printing here photography news much more clearer than the photography news on the right hand right side here no surprises the z mount stacks up very well compared to the 28 to 300 all right let's have a look at the next lens so on the right hand side this time we've got the 24 to 72.8 stop down to f5.6 let's have a look at the center and they're looking pretty close to each other a lot of detail look at these fine lines all very close in the center all very close pretty much on par with each other uh, near the top here both are looking very close to each other again hard to tell them apart in the corners also pretty much the same hard to tell them apart 24 to 70 on the right z mount lens on the left photographic news in both cases pretty much identical yeah so that's great so stop down to 5.6 the 24 to 70 f mount lens is performing much the same as the z mount lens okay let's have a look at the next lens right hand side now we've got the 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens nickel f mount lens stop down to 5.6 and the z mount on the left 24 to 70 at 70 millimeters let's have a look at the center we'll let lightroom do its bit again and um, we've got pretty clear images on both sides does the 70 to 200 outperform the z mount at at 70 millimeters Ooh, it's hard that's a bit of a surprise here i was expecting it to be pretty clear cut that cut that it'll be the same but i think maybe the 70 to 200 does slightly outperform the z mount lens at 70 millimeters that is a bit of a surprise let's have a look in the corners and see what happens it's very bright in the corners on the 70 to 200 lens f mount well it's pretty close hard to tell them apart the contrast seems to be a bit better on the 70 to 200 just shows that the 70 to 200 lens is a pretty damn good lens i think the 70 to 200 wins the f mount 70 to 200 i think has slightly more detail but it's hard to tell them apart very hard to tell them apart well there you go and if we go down to the bottom let's see what we notice they're pretty close to each other hard to tell them apart but it's uh once you stop them down to 5.6 they are so good and in the center let's go back to the center it's hard to tell them apart they, and this is at 200 percent they are fantastic they're both very good now let's have a look at 70 millimeters at f8 so we stopped down the, the four lenses to f8 so we've got the z mount 24 to 70 on the left and on the right we've got the 28 to 300 let's have a look what happens zooming in at 200 percent all right what do we got at f8 the 24 to the 28 to 300 is looking a bit better the contrast is better on the z than the 28 to 300 you can see that uh, that here in this photograph if we go up to the top what happens to the detail the z has more detail than 28 to 300 expecting that will be the same on the corners here that is also true we'll look at photographic news the 28 to 300 does improve, I think, as you stop it down, which you would expect anyway. But the contrast is not as high as the Z across the entire image. So 
Okay, let's have a look at the other lenses. So now we've got on the right, we've got the 24 to 70 and the Z on the left, just loading the image. And they're pretty much the same as far as contrast and detail. At F8, top the same. On the sides, much the same again. So that's pretty good. And then let's have a look at the last lens. All right, so we've got the 70 to 200 on the right and the Z 24 to 70 on the left. Zooming in and uh, again, the 70 to 200 is looking pretty damn fine. Lots of detail. Again, it's debatable which is better, but I think the 70 to 200 maybe is slightly better. If we look at the top, again, a little bit more contrast for the, 20, the 70 to 200 f mount again it's almost it's identical maybe it's it's debatable where you see any difference oh i don't know 70 to 200 maybe a little bit okay and the result and the conclusion well it's um uh, it's very interesting the conclusion is the nikon z system is outstanding the 24 to 70 uh, produces incredible results both in contrast and in detail across the whole range from 24 to 70 even though we're only testing the 50 and the 70 uh, focal lengths on that um, at f4 it's hard to tell these two lenses apart the, the leica and also the z6 uh, the uh, z system lens as far as these lenses are concerned uh, probably i would say these two are the highest detail with regard detail and also contrast. So these would be the best lenses on those two aspects. Uh, followed by this one, which is the 24 to 70 f 2.8, and probably the most compromised as far as the contrast and also detail is concerned is which you would probably expect is one with the greatest zoom range, which is the 28 to 300. So. You can see that the 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 frequency of use and okay <laughs> then probably the least quality is the iPhone. The frequency of use is not necessarily proportional to the quality of the tool that's being used because it's a physical aspect that actually comes into and the convenience and whether it fits in with the process that you're following that determines the type of tools that you use being the cameras or the lenses. Anyway, I hope that was interesting to you. Um, I've been running a couple of surveys on my channel. Uh, the last one was uh, what with regards to photography, how do people they see themselves, whether they see themselves as beginners or intermediate or advanced in photography. Thank you very much for responding to those. What I've learned from that is that I have a whole range of people and viewers and subscribers to my channel uh, across all the different levels of experience with regards to photography. The next survey I'll be running is with regards to <laughs> this video and that is this entire process. And if I put it again down to those four categories, the idea, the tools, the process and the results uh, as a viewer or a subscriber and or subscriber Again, the survey will be, what do you want to see more about the, uh, the ideas, as far as the creativity of photography, um, more about tools, so the equipment and the lenses that are being used, uh, the process, the techniques, the editing, etc., and uh, all the results around media and presentation and how to do it and um, Anyway, so they are the four categories again. So there'll be a survey on that. So I really welcome your participation in that survey as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up. It helps support the channel. If it's the first time to my channel and you haven't subscribed, or if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, bye.